So um, thanks for, for inviting me today. I'm gonna, I'm James McCarthy. I work at Google. Um, I'm gonna talk a little bit about mobile app onboarding. So the actual flow of getting users into your app and um, productive quickly. Um, let's go to the next slide. So uh, I've been at Google for four years. Uh, I, before that, I spent nine years at Goldman Sachs. And for two years, I ran my own mobile app uh, consulting company called Digital Catnip. I built about 10 apps in a year for customers. They paid me to, it was primarily startups. Um, most of the apps were not that successful. What can you do? It's a startup environment. Um, I have a master's in computer science from RPI and a bachelor's. I was a double major in business and computer science as well at SUNY Albany. And I'm from Syracuse originally. This is a picture of me in Australia. Uh, I'm going to talk on the next slide about team events. Uh, and one of the great things I got to do, you're going to do a design sprint later. I led a design sprint for customers in Australia. And as part of that, I got to meet a koala. It was a wonderful experience. Um, and this is my wife. <laughs> Let's uh, go to the next slide. So uh, I'm head of customer experience and conversions for Google. Um, I work primarily with American customers, uh, customers in the Americas, so North and South. Um, and we help uh, Google advertisers improve their mobile experiences. And that means adopting Google products, Google best practices, um, working on their design and layout so that they can realize the maximum value from their advertising spend. So how can we get customers to convert quickly? Um, There's a couple of pictures of my team running events for customers. The first one is in Atlanta. We did that a couple of years ago. That was a fun event. Um, then New York is the one with the big blue banner. And then that's actually my team in the lower right there. It's in the new Playa Vista office in LA where we were doing an event for Design Sprint. Um, it's a Spruce Goose hangar. It used to be the world's largest airplane built by Howard Hughes. It used to be in that hangar and now it's a Google office and YouTube studio. Let's go to the next page. So onboarding is really critical to your app. There's really two states that a user is gonna have when they're in your app, right? The first is uh, getting into the app itself and like understanding the experience and what they can do and the functionality. And the second one is retention. Like once you've got them in, how can you keep them in? Um, both are very important. Uh, uh, our experience is that the most significant drop off in app usage is in the first two weeks. Um, something like 90% of your users will be lost in the first two weeks of uh, after app download. Um, in fact, there's a large percentage of people who will only app open your app once, 23% only at open the app once. There's even a large percentage, I would even say 20%, as high as 20% that download the app and never open it. Um, so that's, it's across the board, reten like getting people through that first experience is really critical. Um, and you can even see here the stat of 77% don't come back to the app within you know, three days after they install it. The main purpose of onboarding is to get users to a state of productivity. So how can we get people to that first conversion? And for those that aren't aware of what a conversion is, it's, it's the desired action that you want the user to take in the app. And there's a lot of different types of, of conversions. It could simply be signing up for a feature or a form, uh, signing up for a subscription, making a purchase, but it is some kind of business objective that you have within your app that signals to you that this user is valuable. Um, it's a business objective. Um, and then finally, there's four, four areas we're gonna focus on uh, today that I'm gonna walk through. Welcome screens, the tutorial, uh, when and where to do account setup, and then obviously focusing on commerce and conversion. All right, we're ready for the animation. Let's go to the next slide. All right. It's, it's not a big animation, guys. It's just a couple of fade-ins. So there's three user flows that I want to walk through in terms of when to get users to set up an account. The setup of the account is one of the biggest signals that they're committed to your app. And if you do it at the wrong period of time, you're going to lose them because it is a period of time where you're going to be asking for private information. It's something that we kind of gloss over, especially when we're new to the app world. But it is really critical. You are asking users for their email address, their first name, you know, personal information like their address or credit card, that is very sensitive and it is not something a user is just going to give to you. The first flow you're probably you, uh, familiar with is just when you open up the app and it asks you immediately to set up an account. All the social media companies do this now. Amazon can do it. 
it really works well for companies where you have an existing brand that people are familiar with, or you have uh, features that need to be unlocked, like you're a utility company, a phone company or something, and the person needs to see their bill or whatever, then that could be useful. This, this flow works well. It doesn't work well when they have no idea who you are. Uh, let's talk about the second flow, so the next animation. This is where you're able to introduce the product. Maybe people, um, they know, might know your brand a little bit, but they aren't familiar with what features you offer. You know that you can at least just get away with giving them the value proposition, but you, before you give them any features, they have to set up an account. Um, FinTech is a really good example of this one, for instance, where you have to get required, you know, you're required by law to capture some information before they can do something. And then the final introduction, the final flow is the try before you buy. Um, and so this would be where you give them a demo functionality, they get free functionality, but if they want to do something, they have to actually uh, go through and um, complete the action. Yep. Okay. That's uh, great. So the value prop. So the value proposition. We talked. I think Bruce mentioned this a little bit, right? This is one of the most critical things you can do for your app. And I love this screenshot on the right because it doesn't have an actual value proposition. There's no statement here as to why you should take actions and log in or sign up in the app. Um, many of the best in class applications now have at least that statement. Even those that I mentioned before, like an Am Amazon or an Instagram, they will give you at least a statement as to why. I was on Warby Parker's website last night and their value prop is simply, Get free frames at home, you get five of them, try them on for free, send back the ones you don't want, right? That's a sample value prop as to why you would wanna even take this step. You wanna get them to understand the value of your app as soon as possible. You know, it's, it, this quote in the bottom is great and I, I, I love it. It's, it's more about registering, it's less about registering and it's more about how they decide whether or not to use the product, what is on the landing page and what is the marketing message. Let's go to the next slide. Okay, so a tutorial is generally required to introduce your user to the app. And tutorials can take lots of different steps. One of the things that we do in Google a lot now is pop-ups. So if you're familiar with the app, everybody knows like how to use an email app. So Gmail doesn't need to introduce you to email, but what it will do is it'll pop up functionality and let you know, oh, hey, here's where your meet tab is, or here's where your other accounts might be. Um, another feature is to walk them through a tutorial step-by-step. But 72% of users say it has to be done within 60 seconds in order for them to keep using the app. If it takes longer than that, um, they're probably going to abandon you. Um, so our recommendation is separate the steps into one flow. So you have several things that they need to complete before being useful. Maybe there's a recommendation that they have to give out. What do you like to shop for? Um, and then put those, put those into one clear flow clearly articulate what happens at each stage. So this one is actually kind of interesting. One, the language is incorrect. I, I, this deck has been shared with thousands of people and they, nobody's ever pointed out the deck, the language is wrong. But I, I would actually not say, what, what do you like to shop for? It's more, you know, tell us what you want so that we can show you, you know, the, the, the products that you desire or the features that you want to use, right? Help us help you is, is, would be a statement that I would look for. Uh, instead, I think that's much more likely to get engagement. And then um, finally, how are you going to get users to conversion? So they complete these steps, and is the is the completion going to be the sign up, the subscription, the purchase, etc.? How does this tutorial aid you, aid you in that uh, fact? And then finally, the progress bars at the top are really important. In fact, we'll, we'll come back to it a little bit in the psychology of it, but. Dropping them into the progress bar halfway through actually ensures completion much more likely than if you start at step one of five, because they'll be like, oh, I got five more steps to go. I really don't want to do this. So there's a little bit of psychology you can play there and show that that step through as they go so that they feel like they're already bought in and almost done. Let's go to the next slide. Yeah, this is the psychology. So there's a couple of different concepts that you can use while thinking about, you know, getting people into your app and how they can start to be productive. Endowed progress is the same idea that I just said. They have a head start. They've already done a few steps. They only have a few more to go. Cognitive closure is, you know, there's ambiguity. There's steps I have to take in order to be able to use this app. It's going to drive me crazy if I don't finish them. So you use a checklist to kind of get them to feel like they're almost done and they know what they've done and they know what they have to do, uh, what they have remaining. And then empty states is on the right-hand side there. When they haven't done any work, 
let them know what they need to do to actually populate the screen they're looking at. That's a really good way. And there's even a call to action here, add favorite. So they know exactly what they need to do in order to start seeing things on that screen, right? And you should sit back and ask yourself, what is a conversion for this app? What are we trying to accomplish? What do we need the user to actually get to? And what are the steps that we need to have them take in order to get them there? Is it a long series of, of steps? I'd probably advise finding shortcuts where possible. Um, but if it's not, you know, how can you actually let them know these are the things they need to do in order to convert? Let's go to the next slide. Okay, this is my friend Socrates. Um, I found him, Google has this massive library of every icon, like if I want to use an icon from Android or Chrome OS or whatever, they have this massive library of icons I can search and I found Socrates last night. You're going to see him a couple times in this deck. Um, so users, if you don't provide clear utility to users, they are going to abandon your app, right? They're not going to give you the personal information that you need to be helpful for them and to drive them towards conversion unless they get that there's some kind of value for them to do it. And this is where uh, giving them a taste of what your app features are is really important, right? More than anything else, allowing them to try before they buy, particularly for if you don't have that brand recognition, if you're an app first company and they need to use the app in order to really buy in on your business you really want to figure out a way that you can offer free services and then lock in their sign up in order to actually uh, take advantage of the full features that you might have. Uh, a really great example of this might be they're able to, you know, set up uh, or, or like, for instance, in this one, they can watch a few courses, they can do 30 seconds of a course, and then they get bought in, but they can't complete the course until they sign up and actually give you a credit card, for instance, right? You allow them to see all the different material, they can try it a little bit. Head, Headspace is a really good example of this, right? They give you 10 free med medica uh, meditations. And then if you uh, don't, you know, want to continue, you don't have to sign up. But if you want the rest of the meditations, you have to sign up to continue. Um, some exceptions to the rule, I mentioned this before, finance is a big one. Any area where you have regulations that you have to require, you know, know your customer information, get customer profile information up front. There are exceptions to these rules. Let's uh, continue. Okay. Uh, so this is, this is some of the more important stuff to think about, right? Like how are you actually going to incentivize conversion, right? A rewarding system, a gamification system is a great way to get buy-in so that they will continue to come back to your app. You only need to do three more things and then you redeem your reward. It also has that, that, uh, psychology bit a little bit and that you've done two things already. You only need to do three more to complete, right? And so it's this, how can we set you up so that you're bought in and you want to complete the task? And so, yeah, and you know, you're going to get a reward for completing the task and it's going to help you complete your business objectives. Creating that gamification is, is, a, is a good way to do that. I don't think it's right for every app. I think it depends on the situation and what your goals are. It should stand in service of the user. So we talked about like putting the user first, Bruce mentioned this through Vint. And that's something that I, I, I think is really important, ensuring that the rewards that you're creating, the users are actually getting some benefit from completing the game. It's not just like a couple of stars flash on the screen or like congratulations, or they're actually getting some kind of um, you know, reward in return. Maybe there's a social aspect that they can share, you know, share to Facebook, share to Instagram with their friends, and then you get a little bit of a marketing play out of that as well. Um, you can see how that works. And this is also a really good way if you, like I said before, you have a lot of steps to conversion. This is a good way to break it up. So you use your tutorial to do a few steps up front and then you use gamification to complete at the end, right? Um, that, that, that can be a good solution for a long conversion funnel. And then finally on the next slide. Yeah, sorry, John. Yeah. Uh, all right, Socrates is back. So. You know, one of the, the, the questions here is how can you close the gap when between that aha moment when they figure out the value of your app, they've used it enough to know that they want to, 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 to keep it, but they may not actually convert right away, right? Incentives are a great way to do that. And, you know, coupon codes, giving them, you know, notifications saying, hey, come back, 
try the app out, you know, you get a benefit for doing so, we'll throw in a, you know, an extra thing in your cart or something like that. That's a really good way to get them to convert. And doing it on the first try as well as part of sign up. So they've completed your tutorial, they browse the app a little bit, popping up like some kind of uh, promo code or something to incentivize that first conversion is a really good way to lock it in so that they will actually um, to finish uh, converting in your app. Um, there's a couple of quotes here. I think uh, the, the second one is actually my favorite, more my favorite one. It's this, this idea that people really want to know that the decision that they took was the right one. They don't want to deal with like, oh, I made, I made a decision to buy and it was a mistake. They don't want to have that cognitive dissonance in their head. And so the, 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 what we want to do is make them feel good about the decision they're making. And that goes back to the gamification and the reward system. But it also comes to this where it's like, hey, I got rewarded. I got a really good deal here for doing this. And so I should continue to do it because I'm going to continue to get rewarded. Um, that's, that, I think, is a really, really good um, uh, a good feeling for the user. So 